Motors and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. It is a 2014 Chevrolet. It's a half ton, look at the cab, short box. It's got the 5.3 direct injection in it. Money lights on, so let's see what we find. I'll wait for the Altel to go through a uh, update here. So let's grab the VIN out of this thing. Uh, let's see, uh, E, that should be the right VIN. 14 Silverado. Yes, we'll go right to the ECM. Let's see. Yep. And this does have the 4.3, or the, yeah, the 4.3, the 5.3 in it. Yep, 2014. Grab some codes. The guy was saying that he tried to clear his own codes. And it would just it just kept coming back with this one code he said P one two nine D zero zero fuel pump driver control module ignition on start switch circuit voltage low. Hmm. Well, the truck does run ignition on start switch. All right, uh, let's just verify what he says here that it is a one hundred percent hard fault. It definitely is because it came right back so um, let's just look at some data it's got a fuel pump driver module or fuel pump control module okay so it's saying our ignition switch circuit voltage is low let's see if they have any uh, voltage data pids in here that's fuel pressure, fuel pressure. So these are direct injection, so they're going to work in the thousands of PSI. Engine load, accelerator map. If this is like the older GMs with the fuel pump drivers, there's only, I think, like two power wires back there. Here we go. Ignition 1 signal voltage, 12.2. Let's just start it up for the heck of it. Right up to battery voltage. All right, bunch of five volt references, and that is it. So I'm curious if this is what it's looking at, because if it is, that looks fine. Let's just shut the key off. See if it goes to zero. It does. Key on. Battery voltage. So what we will have to do, because I don't see any uh, anything else on here that would be uh, assuming that, because I'm seeing map sensor, throttle position, so we're making a big assumption at this point now that I look at this that uh, this is fuel pump driver data. Okay, so that, that is something we have to keep in mind. Because this very well could be just, um, you know, fuel system data pids that Altel has sorted out for us. So we do have to be mindful of that. Um, let's just see once we go back here if we have an actual fuel pump control module. Let's see. I'm not seeing anything there. All right, so that is something we have to be mindful of. All right. All right, so we have to kind of take that uh, take that with a grain of salt. Um, functions, no. Um, just, I like to flip through some menus here just to kind of see what's available. All right, so we're going to have to be, yeah, like I say, we're going to have to be mindful of that. Oops. I don't want trouble codes. I want to pop back into live data. Let's just see. Go under uh, actual just engine data, see if there's ignition pids there. Sometimes they'll use uh, like a comparison uh, for modules that have low voltage codes on ignition sources. They'll compare it to another module. So let's see if we can find uh, the excess supercharger data pin. It's not supercharged. 
Let's see, there we go, ignition signal, ignition accessory signal. Let's key off, key on. That, yeah, that ignition one, so that very well could be the same, same signal, so. All right, that is something we have to keep in mind. Okay, let's see if there's anything else on here that I think is worthwhile. And there isn't. All right, tell you what, let's, uh, I'm gonna grab that code again because my memory is pretty short. And we'll look at code setting criteria because we're gonna have to see what it takes to generate this code in order to fix it. Because otherwise we're just guessing. So I grabbed our uh, data here. According to service info, uh, the fuel pump driver module, the fuel pump driver control module monitors the ignition voltage circuit in order to determine if the voltage is in normal operating range. Uh, it's a continuously run uh, monitor when all the modules are awake. And the code setting condition is the fuel pump driver control module does not agree with engine control module power mode for one second. Uh, and then we'll set this code. So this should be pretty cut and dry if we look at ECM, uh, the ECM power mode. Uh, so that's going to be your, you know, your ignition switch input uh, to the ECM. And of course, that's going to compare it to uh, what it sees at the fuel pump driver. Uh, just sometimes flowcharts are helpful for a little info. So we'll just kind of dig through this. Uh, verify there's no PO562. Verify that the 129 is not set. Operate does it does it set go to circuit test so it's gonna be pretty pretty cut and dry. Um, what are they gonna have us do? Use a test light between ignition circuit terminal six and ground. So yeah, so it looks like there's probably just gonna be one ignition feedback there. Uh, ignition off. Yeah, does it uh, test light light blah blah blah. Uh, yeah. So this looks pretty cut and dry from what I read. Uh, so we should be able to check for our ignition power back at the fuel pump module, which I would find it really hard to believe that this thing would even run if that power was missing. I may be wrong, uh, but if I remember correctly, we could look at a wiring diagram. There should only be, I think, two powers back there. Your big heavy power wire that runs the fuel pump and then an ignition source. Uh, let's see. Yeah, just basically checking uh, power and ground check at the uh, module. Um, let's see if we can get, see if we can find a wiring diagram here pretty quick. Um, fuel controls, fuel pump control. Hopefully it's all in one diagram. Let's see, fuel pump driver control module. Yeah, that should be complete. So we've got data lines, we've got a ground. Fuel pump, main ignition relay. So here it is, yeah, so number six. That comes from the main ignition relay. And then you got your 30 amper. So yeah, you do have your one big heavy gauge there. Uh, internal relay or transistor of some sort probably that runs the fuel pump. Oops, I got click happy. Now I did it. Now what we got? Control module. Shield cut, yeah, so we should be good. Not many wires on it, little guy. So, yeah, number six looks like it's uh, was that violet with green? Yep, so we got a violet with green. I suppose we could check it for power into the fuse box, but we ought to check it right at the uh, right at the source. And then one black wire is our ground, and that's it. It's got shielded wires going to the fuel pump. Okie dokie, I think we're. In good shape for the shape we're in. Let's uh, go back here. Oops. Ah, shoot. Where are we at? One of these buttons will do it. We'll grab our data. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> so there's our power mode keys on right now. So this is what the fuel pump driver module is going to look at is this power mode. And our you know ignition input, so let's turn it off. Make sure that's just not stuck or something. So it's off. Should be accessory run. Let's see if we got crank run. So the ECM is C in power mode, so that's good. 
gravy. Let's get this baby up in the air. Looking like we probably have a bad fuel pump driver module. So the fuel pump driver, it's a little different than uh, other ones we've worked on. Usually they're plastic and uh, kind of mounted. Uh, that's got another module above it. Which one is it here, fella? With that system. So there's this aluminum one right here. But I don't see our wire color that we need. Looks like we're gonna have to drop this spare down. What color wire was it? Wasn't it violet with violet with green? I'm not seeing, uh, let's see here. Figure out how to use this new fangled tablet. There we go. Come on. Oh, dang it all. I'm going to have to look this wiring diagram back up. Uh, I want to make sure that we're on the right wire color here because it looks like looks like there's a couple modules hanging out back here. There's like an aluminum one that hangs down. I want to make sure we're, uh, we're on the right unit, but I don't see what I thought to be our wire colors. Engine control schematics. Wheel pump control. Uh, let's see. Look like there's only just a few wires. Yeah, uh, that wire that definitely does not have data lines on it. So violet with green. And there definitely is no violet and green on that. So yeah, I don't know what that uh, what that module is right offhand. But we're definitely gonna let the spare tire down so we can get to this sucker. Of course, the next million dollar question is, will the spare come out of it? 90% of the time they don't. Hey, it must be they did away with their lock. This one's actually coming down. Imagine that. Yep, no more lock on the spare tire, thankfully. That was a friggin' joke. Alright, that's not enough what we can do what we gotta do. Now we can see what's going on. There are all kinds of modules here. This is probably trailer brake, maybe the trailer brake relay, trailer brake control module or something. I don't know. Not too concerned about it. The one we're after hides up top here. I don't know if we should just take the bolts out of it, to be honest with you. It should be the right colors up here. Yeah, maybe, just maybe, I can get my little digits up here and get this thing up. Plug. Of course, it's got red lock in it. You know what? I'm just going to get it down. I ain't going to sit there and try to fiddle. Looks like hopefully just a couple bolts that hold this thing in. I can see it probably be a whole lot easier instead of trying to mess with that connector. So basically, all we have to do at this point is get it down and see if we have power on that violet with green make sure we got a good ground like i said i can't fathom that the truck would run without it but perhaps for a module to get as fast as these trucks ride right out, I tell you. Not the most piss poor place you could put one, but. Alright, got the red tab open. Now hopefully. Uh, we should be able to very gingerly 
front probe that on its ignition source so we can use some high amperage testing devices, which I have. We've got our 4 amp test light. We're going to hit up a ground. It should be this big black one here. And the second one in. Front row. We got no light, folks. Key is on, right? I hope so. Let's double check. We'll pop back in the I'll tell you. I'm pretty sure I turned the key back on. Uh, let's see. Back diagnosis. See if we've got our data. Power mode. It is in the run position. That's interesting. Let's make sure our tool. Let's make sure our tool's good. We should have full time power back here on this guy, I think. Yeah, so we do have full time power there. So we do have a good ground, so we're not concerned about that. All right. Second one in, let's just make sure. Boom. We got no power. Awesome. So, we're you dealing. Yes, ma'am. All right, tell them I will be just un momento. All right, well, let's, uh, let's have a look here before I gotta go answer the phone. Uh, we're gonna pop back in. I always get these buttons confused here. That can't be the only thing this runs. Uh, we've got this uh, ignition main relay under the hood. So you guys can see the ignition main relay and the fuse that comes off from that. Honestly, I wouldn't have checked the fuse first because I'm going to feel real freaking silly if that fuse is blown. Real silly. And obviously the truck can run without ignition power back here. shaking because I feel bad about this. Uh, let's see. It just says F. Let's give us any usable numbers. Dang it. F34 UA. I don't know what that means. It's fuse 34 maybe. Yep. Fuse 34 ECM ignition 15 amp. Alright. So that's the one we're after. There's just no way this fuse only feeds one circuit. Not today's day and age, but I've been wrong before. But, however, if the fuse is blown, we still have to figure out what blew the fuse, right? 34. That's this one. Key on. Good on that side. Good on that side. Bar bing bar boom. I'm just going to verify that in another wiring diagram. Fuse 34, yep. It is a 15 amp, so whoo! I'm out of hot water now. Uh, so potentially we're either dealing with a crappy connection on the bottom of the power distribution center here. Maybe it's toasty. Or broken wire. This should be timely. However, I don't think we're gonna need a module. And we don't have a short, so obviously we're dealing with an open. Otherwise, our fuse would be blown, so time for visual inspection. So I was trying to develop a plan, and I see that there, according to OEM diagrams, that there's no connector between uh, our fuel pump driver and the underhood fuse box. Because I was hoping to be able to split the system in half, but that's really not uh, plausible. And uh, being that this is an incomplete diagram, obviously, from the underhood fuse box, I, I really found it hard to believe that this fuse ran, you know, just one item. Uh, so I see it is uh, XD50A under a fuse box and it's J5 and connector X or X5, you know, uh, pin J5. So I looked this up, this is connector X5. And then uh, we're going to go down to, this is under a fuse box and connector X5. We're going to go down to J5, which is this here. This is why we're after this violet with light green. Uh, was that? That's a circuit number, right? Yeah, circuit 439. Uh, ignition crank voltage, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, I don't think that we're going to find a bad fuse box simply because we have our ignition voltage, if you guys remember, in the data pit and that actually worked. Uh, however, I don't know if these two, these two wires here, the violet with light green, the purple with light green, if they're spliced together in the same crimp, perhaps one of the circuits could be good, one could be bad. Uh, so we'll definitely have to keep that in mind. Um, but I was really hoping to find another connector on this system, but it's not, it's not working in our favor uh, that way. So uh, I guess we'll go underneath, we'll do visual inspection. We'll see if we can find uh, the wire that we're looking for. Uh, violet with light green, you know, find it further upstream, at least isolate uh, perhaps where it's broke. Um, hopefully we can just find it in the body harness under there. So I looked through uh, visual inspection, I didn't see anything. All the, uh, whoa, too much zoomage. Uh, the harness is all intact across, you know, all down through the body. Uh, lots of dirt, a lot of crap sitting on it, you know, from back roads. Uh, truck's getting pretty rusty uh, for 14, but um, I didn't see anything that looked like it was rubbed straight through the harness, so I figured, uh, being that there's no other connector, why don't we try to start up front uh, the best that we can. Um, hopefully we can get, to, uh, get this harness opened up here. We'll find a, try to identify our wire. That kind of funky thing they got going on here. What kind of funk do you got going on, Chevy? changing stuff up. Get out of here. Alright. I wanted to pick a spot that is obviously easily repairable. And then hopefully we can quickly isolate, you know, are we going forwards, are we going backwards, are we going home, what are we doing? Open. It looks like there's some factory tape hanging right here that we can open up without causing a big mess. Um, now I'm going to get the question about 50 times, is the truck under warranty? No. So we'll answer that question. And the other question we're going to get a thousand times is why am I not using a wire tracing device? And I have one. I've actually got the power probe. I don't know what it is, ET2000 or something they call it. And the fact of the matter is, it just doesn't work. Um, it's just a fact of life, folks. You get a harness this big, this thing turns into one gigantic antenna. And that thing will waste more of your time than any other tool I've ever touched, uh, in my opinion. Now, some people may have had good success with it on small harnesses. However, I have not. Oh, well, there's gonna be. I thought there was an end of tape there, but there's not, so we'll have to uh, cut through this. And no, I don't have a sewing seam ripper, so I'm gonna get that question. So I'll just try to answer some questions as we go. Questions we always get anytime we're chasing down a, a broken wire. Um, and no, I do not have a wire tracer from the phone company because that's going to be the other question that we get. So I don't have one of those. So I see a violet with green right here, but that appears to be too heavy of a gauge for what we were testing back there. So let's just see what we have. We've got a bunch of twisted pairs. up a little bit more give us some room there is a violet with green that is probably gonna be our one yet so we got two violet with greens here we got a real heavy you know heavier gauge we've got a lighter one it's gonna be the lighter of the two I just want to make sure we don't have any more
doesn't appear so. I'm just going to go back and double check on our module. It should be this one here. This one's quite a bit lighter. I'm not going to give it quite the yank just yet. Let me go double check. We'll test it. That should be the ticket. We'll get it right on a spot where we can easily repair it. Pierce it. Now the challenge of finding a good ground. So there we are, test light lights. Kind of got to wiggle the ground here. So that quickly tells us what's that tell us, folks? We got a broken wire between what we're going to consider point A and point B. So now the next thing to do, the next thing to do is fix our wire before we move on. Because we're done checking here. If you guys poke holes and you live in a salt bell, you absolutely 100% have to fix your wire. These are not in very good environments, as you can tell by the condition of this truck. So we're going to hit this up with some liquid electrical tape and you got to give this stuff some time to dry. So I'm going to come back, I'll put a second coat on that. I've had super good success with this, I've actually done some testing with it, independent laboratory testing on some wires that I poked and stuck in my vise and coated them and just to see how resilient it is and it actually works quite well. So now we're not moving on down the line. Got my OSHA approved bucket to stand on here. So the next most likely spot for them to actually fail is right at the connector, which we probably should have already checked, but we didn't because we saw the, the fuse in the mix here. So what I want to do is just open up this tape here. We're going to give her a little tug right at the back of the connector to see if it's a pin issue. Just because looking at the harness, I don't see any, I don't see any real anomalies, any, anything there. And I got a lot of kinks and bends and stuff here. So we'll just open up this tape. So it's kind of all wadded up here. That's interesting. And the funny thing is, I see screwdriver marks on this connector here. So it almost kind of makes me wonder if somebody's back here playing. Tugging that way. Connector feels good and tight. Well, I don't know, you know what? This this wire looks a little lighter than the one that looks a little lighter gauge than the one that we did. I'm gonna have to double check though and make sure we're on the right little deal here, fella. Bit embarrassing. I'm gonna go double check that. Yes sir, live on camera. I made a mistake. I'm glad I saw it. So here, this was high and I almost can't see the green stripe on it. Here is the wire we're after, so it's uh, definitely lighter gauge. Whew. You anti-wire pokers are gonna go nuts on me on this one. So let's check the correct wire now. That's a major boo-boo. That could have sent us on a wild goose chase. There. Ah, we're still on the right path though. Whoo! <laughs> Big dummy. Okay. Yikes. That would have sucked. Especially if we found out we didn't have power here and we started tearing things apart. Whew. Man. Second mistake. So now we've got to fix that wire. Now these uh pimonos, they are the bomb diggity. They, the heat, the heel, the hole they poke is almost like self-healing. It is so, so tiny. But still, we take preventative measures. It's CYA, they call it. I do not want to know that work that I did created another problem. So, I'm just going to kind of double layer that one we already did. You gotta do a good job, people, otherwise 
they won't invite you back. Got a big old drip hanging off that one. There we go. Smooth it out. It's like butter. Okay, let's keep trucking. Okay, back on our OSHA bucket. Uh, man, I'm making a lot of mistakes here. Uh, so what we want to do, even though this is tight in in the in the connector, what I need to know 100% for sure is, you know, I've seen them before with that crimp wire and they've just got more insulation than they do wire. I doubt that's the problem here, but we're going to check it right here first. Uh, it's the easiest thing to do. It's easily repairable. And this will let us know we're not broke at the connector because it would be a shame to find out and get all the way back here. Is there anything shiny on this truck? That's shiny. You need something shiny. Come on, give me something shiny. Alright. Not so much as a flicker. Okay. We're in good shape for the shape we're in. We know we're not broke right there. Good. Just had to know. I doubted that was the case because I would have thought the problem would have reared its ugly head earlier uh, than a couple years after the truck's been being driven. Uh, you know damn well where this thing's going to be broke. It's going to be the harness behind the gas tank or something. Okay, let's find another spot. Cut it in half again. So how do you guys feel about going right here? Good? Good. Let me get my OSHA bucket. Well, I just left the car down. Well, oh, it's a little too low for an OSHA bucket. Um, so this is right where it splits up over to go over the fuel tank. Move my light so you guys ain't getting blinded. Does that help? I don't know. I can't even see the camera. The car. Um, this probably seems to be a good a spot as any. We'll see if we can just open up the harness a little bit here. Just enough to find that skinny little wire. The thing is, we got to be able to, we got to be able to fix whatever we open up. So you have to be mindful of that. Wonder. Let me get. I'm gonna get a little fork. See if we can't take this zip tie off the frame. I'm gonna get this harness out or we can do the hokey pokey. Lots of wires on cars nowadays, man. Like I say, I wish uh, I wish I had a little wire finder tool that worked well, but like I say, I, I've tried to use that one that I have for a long time. I tried using it, but it was just, it was so finicky. I mean, you have to have it so many inches away from the wire and like I say, when it was in a big harness like this, forget about it. I mean, you were, you'd be picking up signal up by the headlights, you know. I mean, it just, it just never seemed very useful to me. Small harness that's out in the open, you know, like they show it when they demonstrate the tool. Yeah, it works good, but you can also see it with your own two eyes at that point. So this will isolate it to the last. Essentially, we've split the system in half again. up here behind this cross member or this body mount or box mount whatever you want to call it all right again i'm not using a sewing seam ripper we're just going to be very ginger we're not going to cut any wires find our wire right up on top. That would be helpful. Not a 
always the way it works, but it'll be helpful nonetheless. Ah, I'm standing on my tiptoes. Or twist some pairs. Okay. I'll leave that tape right there. Yeah, and then it What's up, Mrs. O? We're, we're hot on the trail of broken wire. Usually I can sniff these out with my big old schnoz. And we've made some mistakes along the way, live on camera. Look at that. You got the doctor on the phone? Doctor Love? <laughs> we don't need a doctor for that. Yeah, I know. Okay. I think I see the wire. Let me talk to the doctor. Okay, let's see here. I thought when Mrs. O came on, I saw the wire. I think I see it right now. I think it is right on top. Let me get a poking device here. Get under that. There's the little guy. I'm gonna give it a tug test. I can't pull it that way. I can't pull it that way. That is the right little guy right there. I know you got a lot of light up there, but that is the, I don't know, what is that, like maybe 18 gauge, 20 gauge, something like that. All right. Place your bets, folks. in and get the scope on a rope oh man there's nothing shiny back here um ram shit ain't got nothing shiny where are we at we're gonna have to go all the way up to the transfer case maybe hey look at that you guys see that so she lightened all right, so we isolated the back half of the truck. Our problem is either from behind the gas tank, son of a biscuit, or a little further back. This sucks. You know where it's gonna be. And of course, at this point, there's probably at least 50 comments of people asking why we don't just cut the wire and run a new one. And that is because, like in many other videos I've mentioned, I do not like to do that as a common practice because why did this wire break is what I want to know. Why do we have an open? And is there other wires in the harness that are potentially going to be an issue at some point? So I would really fancy finding it. So we're back behind the gas tank now. So this is going to narrow down the last... 18 inches of wire. I'm gonna cut the zip ties. Oh, we're gonna have to cut them off that bracket. They're part of that bracket. We'll just run new zip ties around it. Not a huge ordeal. Ah, I just got a feeling it's gonna be behind that gas tank. I'll cut these zip tie heads off here. All right. Oh, I just know that's where it's gonna be. I got that feeling in my bones. Yes, we're gonna open the harness. No, I'm not using a sewing seam ripper. Open up the tape right till there. I'll try to go forward with it just a little bit. Come on, baby, show me the crusties. That's all we want. We want some green snot, baby. Talk to me. Right. Tore that off to factory specs. You guys see anything? I don't know. I hope so. Where's my wire? That one's not the right, right color, wrong size. I know you're here. I can feel you. Right color, wrong size. Wow, there's a lot of them with the right color and the wrong size. There, is that little guy right there? Come to Papa. Is that you? Clean me off a little. That's our guy right there, right? She tiny. Come on. And a magnet on this thing you can pick up a car with. That is purple with a green stripe. Long 
tugging. It sounds like it might be free. No, oh, quit tugging that way. Quit tugging that way. Well, the tug test did not prove fruitful there. Unless it did crack loose. But, uh, we got quite a bit of slack on that, I'll be honest with you. Shiny, come on, shiny. Oops. Ah, we got light, folks. Amen, hallelujah. It is not broke behind the tank. Yes, that is awesome. Now I can feel confident pulling a little bit more. Nope, we ain't pulling it. All right, well. <laughs> oh my gosh, we narrowed it down. A little bit more. And my phone is ringing. Easy fill, I'm getting excited here. This will work out good because this is going to end up being just about lunch time. Be able to let our liquid tape dry here. Whoops, dropped the booger. We'll come back and double wham yet. Okay, now we're down to the last 18 inches. Before we move on, let's just see. We've already got this one sealed up. Can we pull? Can we pull on this side? slack on it. We did not pull the slack back up on this end. Off to your right, off camera that you can't see. That sucker's going to be right up above this cross member in this big old wadded up mess. I'm going to guarantee it. Well, it has to be because that's where we're at. So I decided to come over here and be slightly more violent with it. And that lady is your problem and where is this lie so this you now if you guys can see it let's enhance enhance that's the green crusties we were looking for baby i was just kind of curious when i pulled it over on the left side i did not see the little loop that we pulled out here decrease in size this will give us an idea where it is and it is 100 percent right smack behind the shock Fantastic. We're just gonna leave that out in the open for right now. Our broken wire is there. That sucks because it's looking snug. Okay. It's back here behind this shock. Let me get this little Christmas tree fastener out there. Okay. It's gonna be broke right inside of that harness. That sucks because it goes to this big, bigger harness up top. If you guys can't see, let me touch it down. It goes to this big harness which comes over. That hooks into everything under the moon. Now it's lunchtime. Um, well, I tell you what, let's unplug. Let's unplug all this business down here. We're gonna see if we can't get this harness loose enough to flip it up over. Uh, up over the shock mount, get it out here where we can fix it, make sure there's no other wires that are potentially uh, in harm's way. Looks like we just gotta unplug this other module here. You folks can't see crap, can you? What kind of video quality is this? I'm gonna get fired. Oh, she's like a tiger. Oh shit, I still got the key on. Oops. Let's see. Get this one zip tie up here. You gonna come out of there? We got Christmas tree fastener, so 
You know what? You don't come out. Oh, you did. See, all you gotta do is threaten them sometimes. Get up in your grill. Oh, dang it all. There's another one back there. Another one back here. It's be a whole lot easier with the body off it. Oh, this morning I should have just cut the dang wire. Ran a new one, told you guys I fixed it. I would do that, you know that. You don't be better than that, YouTube. You guys can't see what I'm doing. So there's a Christmas tree faster up here. It's being a son of a monkey. Yes, jeez. Any other time you look at them things cross-eyed and they break. So now, get over here. Now we can get to her. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think enough of that Kool-Aid guy said. Oh, it should be in this vicinity. Did I just make a rhyme? And though we are not using a sewing seam ripper, for those of you who are just joining us or skipping forward in the video, and though we are not using a wire tracer, however, we did use reasonable deduction which seemed to work pretty well for us. And if I was a little braver in the beginning, I should have tugged a little bit harder. But you never know that, that light gauge wire, you can give her a little yank and next thing you know, you broke it. We don't want to do that. We don't want to cause problems. Uh, no, I do not have the cloth tape factory loom that they use for anyone that's going to leave that in the comments. We're going to tape it up. We're going to fix all of our hokey pokies that we did. So don't worry about that. And that lady is your problem right there. Look at that. There's our broken wire. Boom. Well, let's see. I really don't want to open up the whole harness. So that's super interesting. Look how green that sucker is. Let's uh, we're gonna have to enhance. Look at that. Must be it was, uh, wonder if it got nicked right when it was new or something. Cause that's a lot of green crusties. Light's been on in the truck for about a year, I guess. The inspection's due, so that's why He's worried about it. Let's just look at some other wires. Just to make sure we have no other damage here. Lots of green crap in here, but I don't see anything else. Factor defect. There's no damage in the outside of the harness. This wire runs all the way up through and boom, there she is. Shut behind these brake wires. So we're going to have to open up the harness from here forward to run the wire and get it taped and all that business. And there's one other little branch that comes off from it that goes somewhere else. Looks like a ground wire perhaps. Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, we found it. We came, we saw, we conquered. Yes, sir. I wonder. This is probably the longest, boringest video I've ever done. Searching for a wire. That a few viewers, a few viewers get pissed off at me because they say I take too long. I always refund them all their money, so I just took that one uh, little Christmas tree fastener off. You can just open them up so you can reuse them. So we did that, and I'm gonna use my non sewing seam ripper we're going to open up this harness all the way fix the wire tape it up and we got another chevy another newer chevy that is 
taking down the high speed network. The trailer brake control module on that's going berserk. Shutting everything down. So we gotta fix that after we fix this one. At least I assume that's what it is. Well there you have it folks, that is my repair. We did solder and heat shrink. I just spliced in that piece of wire to cut out the spy. It was a little bit green up into the up into the wires. So I spliced that in, left that out in the open. Of course, we've got our you know liquid electrical tape drying there. We've got a little spot down here on the harness that we poked. Pop off our ocean bucket here. We'll come around. We've got this spot in the harness up here that we've got to tape up and put back together. And then of course where we did the hokey pokey on the wrong wire there. Uh, we'll get that fixed up. Right now, it's lunch time. So what I'm gonna do in an effort to keep the video a little bit shorter is I'm just gonna get things wrapped up, literally. Put back together, I mean, it's you know, no sense in showing that process. Total snooze fest. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna eat lunch, probably come back in an hour or so. Make sure our liquid electrical tape's good and dry. And usually what I do uh, over that, of course you guys know I like to use the Scotch Super 33 electrical tape. I'll take one little, you know, I'll cut off like a one inch square and I'll just roll it over top of that and of course then tape the harness back up and put the loom back over it. I've never had an issue uh, ever doing that, so, um, but you have to do something. If you poke a wire and you live in the salt belt, you have to do the best you can to cover up that injury in the, uh, in the harness. And like I say, these uh, probes that I use, I mean the pin that comes out is micro thin and if you just poke through the first layer of insulation, you know, don't go jamming all the way through the wire, it kind of self heals, you know, to the point where I thought maybe if you put a little bit of heat on it and kind of smushed it back over, that would help also and then use the other preventative measures of liquid tape and regular tape and all that. So we'll get this all buttoned back up, we'll get our modules plugged in, we'll get them screwed back onto the bracket and then at that point we should be done. We'll put the spare tire back in uh, you know what, one thing we can do, you guys are right here, we can verify or repair this point. I just got thinking about that. Where's our super ultra high powered test light? It's right here. And then, which pin was it? It was, I want to go here. I'm going to have to let this truck down, turn the key off. I almost forgot. And then the second one in. Ta da! So we're back in business. We've got power back here now. Broken wires fixed. Repair is verified. We did not have to put a fuel pump control module in it. And uh, guy's just gonna owe me a little bit of time. No parts required. Modules are all back in place, obviously spare tires in. I've got that wiring harness all put back, rewire tied, retaped, all the little trinkets and stuff put back on. Of course we fixed the spot there that we did. We got that one back in and then come up here and this is all back together back in its clips so theoretically we should be in good shape oh it's true let's hope we got enough beans to start this thing up oh we did probably gonna have all kinds of codes because we had them uh on the trailer brake module or whatever it was there unplugged so i'll let this exhaust is all rotted off that's actually kind of loud Roll the windows here, jeez. Little rot box Chevys. Only those of these trucks, but man, they rot out about 10 times faster than anything else around here. No, I ain't hate not Chevys, so. We'll pop into codes. Uh, so we got Lost Comma Fuel Pump Driver Module. So let's clear these out. They should stay gone at this point. Why are they still showing there? Pop back in. No fault codes detected. <laughs> That's interesting. So <laughs> the first time we tried to clear them, we should have uh, popped back out because obviously after we cleared them and it went back in, they were still there. However, we did fix the problem. The money light is out. I'm just going to do a full system scan to see if there's codes in the trailer brake controller and such because we had everything uh, Jesse, trailer brake control. Uh, make sure everything is uh, cool there because we did have stuff unplugged. 
Oh, what do we got? Transfer keys, two speed manual shift, seven speed, what do we got here? So, that's what I'm gonna do. But I think we're golden. All right, so we did set a bunch of codes in the trailer module, you know, some no com issues. I uh, went through and cleared them out, so we got no faults in any other module as of currently. So we'll back back out of here. Now the guy's inspection's overdue, so he's going to have to drive it now to get it through a drive cycle. But we got her fixed. No parts required. Awesome. And that's it, folks. I know it's kind of a boring video, you know, chasing a wire, diagnosing a circuit, blah, blah, blah. But I was hoping it was going to be something more cool, but it wasn't. And, uh, you know, so kind of a kind of a routine repair, uh, no matter what you're working on. You know, you get a circuit code, verify the circuit, try to find both ends, try to split the circuit in half if there's a connector uh, or connectors uh, or modules. You know, that's always helpful, but in this case, that wire is straight from the fuse box straight to the back. So really no other choice other than to, you know, do the hokey pokey along the way, try to find, uh, you know, an area that, that makes sense where you can isolate, you know, bigger sections of harness and also, uh, you know, make sure that when you do it, obviously you got to fix the injury and have it in a spot where it's repairable. And then just try to just, you know, narrow down sections. Like I say, the, you know, the tool I have that transmits a frequency down the wire, the receiver for that tool, uh, like I said, it's a power probe tool. Nothing is power probe. I mean, I use, I mean, I use their torches. I use, you know, I use lots of power probe stuff, but the receiver to pick up the signal, you have to have it a very calibrated distance from the harness in order to have it be effective uh, because it does transmit frequency down other wires. So, you know, if you got it three inches away and it's, you know, beep, 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 and then you move along and then it quits beeping, you get it a little bit closer to the harness and then it starts beeping again. You know, I mean, it, it can send you on a wild goose chases. You know, did it, did it change tone because you're near the broke spot? Is it because the wire is deeper in the harness? You know, there's so many variables when you get a harness that has, you know, 60, 70 wires in it. Um, you know, especially, you know, you get, the, you get the shield of wires and now it's, you know, it's transmitting on the outside of the shielding and it just, it gets, I don't know, I've never had good success with it. So I just don't, I just don't use it because by the time I get done pissing around with it and getting false positives and opening harnesses and it's just, I don't know, maybe there's something better. I know a lot of guys always mention, oh, you got to have a Foxhound from the telephone company and, and this and that. And I'm sure they're accurate because obviously that's how the phone company finds brakes. I don't have one of those tools. I just got, you know, the automotive one. Uh, one thing I do use that one for is uh, if you're finding a broken wire, you can use the Power Probe 4 in conjunction with that e ETC 2000 or wherever it is because it transmits a, you know, frequency down the sensor. So you can use your Power Probe and go along, set that into find mode, but you have to pierce the wire still. Uh, and then it finds that frequency and lets you know you're on the right wire and, and all that, which, you know, you know, it could have worked in this case, but the fact of the matter is you still got to poke the wire. So you may as well, in this instance, use a test light. If it was a circuit that was non-powered, yeah, we, we would use that, or we could use that, I guess, as an alternative and find it that way. So more than one way to fix a problem, obviously, and there's more than one way to open a wiring harness. You can use your knife. You can use a sewing seam ripper. Uh, so I guess we'll leave it at that. I got to move on. Uh, I got some more shivvies out there. Got piles of them. Uh, we got to get them fixed and uh, get out of here. So check us out on our socials. Find us on Patreon. Uh, if you like what we do, want to support us, uh, we appreciate that. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.